Good evening everyone and welcome to Rugby Borough Council's Cabinet meeting this evening. I'm Councillor Sablo, Leader of the Council and Chairman of the meeting. Um, before we begin the formal agenda, there's a couple of administrative items just to cover. Um, first of all, just to say that this meeting is being web streamed to the public through the Council's YouTube channel. Um, during the meeting, in order to make the technology work, any member that wishes to speak will need to push the button mark push to talk on the microphone in front of them, which will cause the camera above to pan to their face whilst they are speaking. I hope all that's clear. Um, I'm also obliged to read out this notice. There is no fire drill scheduled in the building this evening. If the fire alarm sounds, therefore, please could I ask that you make your way down the main staircase out of the main doors of the town hall and congregate at the entrance to Caldecott Park, where an officer of the council will then give instructions when it's safe to re-enter the building. Okay, um, we now move on to the agenda for this evening. Uh, item number one is the minutes. Are members of Cabinet content for me to sign the minutes of the last meeting of Cabinet on the 29th of March 2021? Any dissenters? have been signed. Item number two is apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies for absence, Executive Director? There are no apologies, Chair. Thank you. And item number three is declarations of interest. So first of all, do we have any declarations of non-pecuniary interest as defined by the Council's Code of Conduct for Councillors? There are no hands raised. And secondly, do we have any declarations of pecuniary interests as defined by the Council's Code of Conduct for Councillors? Again, no hands raised. And finally, notice under Section 106, Local Government Finance Act 1992, non-payment of community charge or council tax. No hands raised. Item number four is question time. Executive Director, do we have any questions? There are no questions, Chair. Thank you. Item number five is the South West Rugby Master Plan Supplementary Planning Document, which is with you, Councillor Simpson Vince. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Our local plan was adopted two years ago on the 6th of June 2019. Supplementary planning documents take policies within the local plan and provide a technical framework for developers. The previous SPD for Coton Park East went through this process in 2019 and I can confirm that Warwickshire County Council have now sent a letter to Rugby Borough Council formally requesting the reservation of land for the secondary school in that area. The principle of development for South West Rugby was established with the adoption of the local plan which went through a rigorous process and a public hearing by the planning inspector. The SPDs do not affect the principle of development. This SPD for South West Rugby began its journey in summer 2019. This plan has been through numerous consultations and discussions and many negotiations. However, now is the time to approve this SPD and give our planning officers and planning committee something to work with, with regards to the planning applications that are already coming through for this extensive site. Residents and members were invited to contribute to the local plan as they were with this SPD, which, which actually had additional consultation periods and will be able to with the planning applications that are already being submitted and will continue to be. Cycle lanes, roads, buffer zones, protection of woodland, new schools, new shops and new homes will all occur in South West Rugby. I'm also keen to see self-build homes feature in this area. This SPD has involved a number of stakeholders and partners, including Homes England and the Midlands Design Review Panel, to ensure it's an integrated place in its own right and not just an urban extension. I would encourage fellow borough councillors to attend the briefing session this week before it goes to full council on the 17th of June, and I submit this report as written. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Vincent, very well said, if I may say so. Do we have a seconder from the Cabinet? I'll second that, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Councillor Roodhouse, do you wish to say anything on behalf of the Liberal Democrats? Um, yes, please. I, I recognise this is going to full council, so there'll be more, more to say at full council rather than here at Cabinet. Um, we know it's an SPD and the principle of development has been accepted through the local plan, um, but will be consistent around the 
the buffer, which is still talks about 15 metres uh, within the SPD, we believe that's not good enough. And also the position about cycle tracks and cycle routes and modal shift from this development. And, um, you know, if you do go up and have a look at some of these new developments that are taking place, you can just see the car parking standards are just not good enough that we're actually looking to adopt. And we should be looking to do more about that. There are already cars parked on pavements and, and blocking some roads on brand new developments already. And that's even before we get to uh, the building here. So, um, you know, there's a number of other things which we'll bring out at the full council when it arrives there. I'm back on again. Um, yeah, the, in terms of things like parking, that has been discussed at the recent planning services working party with a view to looking at providing some kind of policy going forward, looking at what we have as a policy and whether we can strengthen it so that we don't have the issues that we've seen on other estates as this progresses. Thank you. And Councillor O'Rourke, do you wish to say anything on behalf of the Labour Group? Uh, yes, um, I would agree with uh, the observations that Councillor Woodhouse has made, and we will be keeping a very close eye on how things develop. Um, and, and looking at, you know, learning from the past, we, we've only got to look at places like Long Lawford and the pavilions to see where things have gone very bad in terms of accessing roads and, and cars parked on pavements. I suppose the bigger issue, and, and something we'll probably focus on uh, a lot more at Full Council, are about not just where the build is but what you know what other services need to be there to support all of these builds as well which is the thing i'm particularly interested in because i'm a councillor in the urban area in the town center and um i you know i'd like to understand better how we are actually sort of ensuring that we are providing this sort of services that people need that are coming to this town and making the most of of, of those people that are coming to the town so i'd like to know a bit more about that and also, I know it's very tricky because we've got a county council as well as borough council and people have different responsibilities. And, but, you know, I do really think it, we really, really need to be pushing now to look at some of the public transport issues. And I know we've done a little bit, but I, I, I feel that we need to be doing a lot more. And I suppose it's difficult for us when we're not part of the West Midlands uh, Authority where we might be in a position to actually attract more funding. But there you go. But it is something that we need to address because we are, at the end of the day, responsible for air quality um, as, as a borough council. And I would really think that we need to put our minds to how we're going to address the fast, you know, the growth of the town because it is a challenge and it doesn't just affect the people that live in the new areas it affects the people that are living in that have lived in the town for years and i don't feel as i've given a thought to that thank you yeah i agree and i and i think it's one of those things that over time we've we and other councils have learned that actually you need to have all your teams working together and communicating and it's not just about planning, it's not just about environment, it's about them all talking together and talking with county. Because rugby, you know, Southwest rugby will be with us. You know, it's not going to be one of those things that if we get it wrong, we can fix it. You know, let's get it right in the first place. And if that means that, you know, we pull everybody in rooms to talk together, that's what we're going to have to do. So, yeah. Thank you all. And I think if if I might just add to the point made by Councillor Simpson Vince, I think we, we're all absolutely in agreement of the need for infrastructure to go with the growth of rugby. And that is the reason that we have local plans and SPDs in place to ensure that, that infrastructure is provided. Okay. Um, we have a proposal and a seconder. Um, can I ask members of Cabinet to indicate their support with a raised hand, an actual raised hand, as opposed to an electronic one? That is unanimous, thank you very much. Moving on then to item number six, we have the Monks Kirby Neighbourhood Plan Plan Area, which again is with you, Councillor Simpson Vince. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is a formality really that needs to come before Cabinet. Uh, Monks Kirby are going to put together a neighbourhood plan. It sits within their parish boundary, so it's quite straightforward in terms of neighbourhood plan. Um, and 
as someone who has gone through the neighbourhood plan process themselves and know how long and difficult it can sometimes be, I wish them the best of luck and I look forward to this coming back to us when it's a plan in a couple of years' time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Vince, and do we have a seconder from the Cabinet, please? I'll second that, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Robbins. And Councillor Roodhouse, do you wish to say anything on behalf of the Liberal Democrats? Um, no, wish them luck, as uh, Councillor Simpson Vince says. It's a lot of hard work gone into here, and uh, look forward to what comes back. Okay, thank you. And Councillor O'Rourke does not wish to speak, no problem. Okay, um, in that case, can I ask members of the Cabinet to indicate whether they support this with a raised hand? That is unanimous, thank you. Moving on then to item number seven, we have the appointment of working parties 2021 to 2022, which is with you, Councillor Robbins. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is the, the usual one we have this time of year, just to tidy up the, the working parties. Um, and uh, obviously we've, we've lost some councillors this year and we've gained some, so we need to tidy this up and make sure that we've got the correct uh, number of people on each working party. So I will move the recommenda recommendation as printed and ask that group leaders uh, put forward the names to uh, uh, member services uh, of the, the members they wish to sit on each of these working parties. Thank you, Councillor Robbins. Do we have a seconder from the Cabinet, please? Councillor Poole, thank you very much. I'll second that, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Roodhouse, do you wish to say anything? Um, everybody's the same on each one apart from the asset management member working group where I'm replacing uh, Councillor Craig McQueen. But everybody else on all the other working parts stays the same. Well, th thank you for your commentary, Councillor Roodhouse, and I would like to place on record my thanks to Councillor McQueen for his contribution to that working party. Councillor O'Rourke? No? Okay. Um, all those in favour, please raise your hand. That's unanimous. Thank you. Moving on then to item number eight, we have the Local Authority Delivery Scheme Proposals, which is with you, Councillor Cray. Thank you, Chair. This report is seeking approval for a supplementary budget to match fund a potential grant from the Government Green Homes Grant Local Authority Delivery Scheme. Whew, that's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, this is a really great opportunity for rugby. This government scheme provides funding for local authorities to improve the energy efficiency of properties and to retrofit them to provide low carbon heating for low income households. And the scheme is going to be coordinated through the Midlands Energy Hub, which will be working with local authorities in terms of helping to provide suitably qualified contractors to deliver the upgrades to those most in need. Rugby has been provisionally awarded a grant of 502,000 and if we're successful in our bid, we'll have to provide match funding of 232,000, which will come from the HRA major repairs reserve. And with this funding, we anticipate being able to invest in improvements in around 90 properties. So as well as reducing fuel poverty, any works carried out will also help to achieve rugby's commitment to be net zero by 2030 by helping to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuel heating. So I really welcome this report and would like to thank officers for all their work on preparing the bid because I know they've had to do it at very short notice. Um, and yeah, I'd like to move the report as written. Thanks very much, Councillor Crane. Do we have a seconder from the Cabinet, please? I'll second that, Chair. We have competition for oh. the role of seconder, but I think <laughs> Councillor Robbins got there first. Thank you, Councillor Robbins. Uh, Councillor Roodhouse, do you wish to say anything? Is it one of those where you third it? <laughs> um, you know, I welcome the report and, and the ambition here. And quite clearly, the corporate strategy lays out <clears throat> a clear ambition to actually uh, reduce the carbon footprint of our housing stock earlier than 2030 as well. So uh, it's only right that we should be investing this money into our housing stock because we have to really accelerate the movement that we want there um, to do that. So I look forward to that. And I note that it's going to be reported to the Climate Change Working Group, uh, which is probably the right way to, to monitor that as well. So the sooner we can get a move on with this, the better. Thank you very much, Councillor Roodhouse. Councillor O'Rourke. Yes, again, I'd echo um, the Councillor Roodhouse's comments. It, um, it is very positive, and I thank the officers for all their hard work, um, because obviously they didn't have a lot of time to prepare 
be sort of a big going forward. And I look forward to hearing the reports and updates at the um, Climate Emergency Group. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Very nice to see some consensus around what is obviously a very important measure. So, members of the Cabinet, uh, can you indicate whether you support with a raised hand? That is unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on then to item number nine, which is a motion to exclude the public under section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972 to consider the following resolution under section 100A subsection 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting for the following items on the grounds they involve the likely disclosure of information defined in paragraphs 1, 2, 3 of schedule 12A of the Act. 